low. Hello? Looking for the absolution. But they told me he was on vacation. The wicked will not prosper, as it is written. There will be a war within and without. Remember also the, thy creator in the days of thy youth. Before the evil days come and the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened and the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look out of the window shall be darkened, and the doors shall be shut in the street, and when the sound of the grinding is low, and one shall rise up at a voice of a bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low, yea, they shall be afraid 
of that which is high, and terrors shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall blossom, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and the desire shall fail, because man goeth to his everlasting home, and the mourners go about the streets. Before the silver cord is loosed, or the, gold, or, or the golden bowl is broken, or the pitcher is broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, and the dust returneth to the earth as it was, and the spirit returneth to God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity. Then when I add a, another proverb in the wise man and the fool are the same in death. The desire shall fail because man goes to his everlasting home. Before the silver cord is loosed or the golden bowl is broken or the pitcher broken at the fountain or the wheel at the cistern and the dust returneth to the earth as it was and the spirit returns to God who gave it. It's not about you getting into heaven. The fantasies people have, including some whoppers, you know, heaven being, well, they have a confusion about the New Jerusalem and heaven being, well, that must be heaven, the New Jerusalem or the kingdom or the, you know, or the temple. To quote the famous preacher named John MacArthur, I want to do everything I can here so I have a good job in the New Jerusalem. I don't want to just be a, a janitor. I kid you not. My one job at the church was janitor. Uh, cleaning the toilets after the Sunday... Uh, Fiesta. I can't call it church. And um, yeah, it was Trish and me. We both did that, and we we didn't want to advance. <laughs> you know? What there's, I don't know that you can understand the lack of competitiveness. <clears throat> I kept my mouth shut for the most part. I said nothing. You know, I watched the official prophets and fools be paraded around in front of me. It reminded me of everything I already knew a long time before that, or high school. You know, it was just a, pro a procession of idiots, one after the other, trying to sell me on something, like sell a used car, you know, like buy this hook, line, and sinker, be one of us, and... Make sure you bring your tie then. and In exchange, you might find some opportunities here. Oh, well, that's a fair exchange. Why don't you just take my soul right now and just kill me? Alas, all is vanity. The wise man and the fool are equal in death. Now, they called me a fool directly, and even in a service, I was called a fool directly I was referred to as a fool you know kind of indirectly but directly the fool the preacher would say he got so mad that um, he got so mad that we belong to God he got so mad that we belong to God and not the world he got so mad that we would put him in his rightful place rather than the preacher. Alas, preacher, all is vanity. Before that silver cord is loosed, man is going to his everlasting home as the mourners go about the streets. But before the silver cord is loosed, the spirit returns to God who gave it.
the silver cord, people do all kinds of, they get all, you know, the silver cord is like that connection to God. You could just put it that way. You don't want that connection cut, amen? That's, it's like, picture it as an umbilical cord that connects all of his creation in a way, you know? I mean, just giving it as, talking about it loosely as a metaphor in a just kind of a real general sense. The silver cord is that which is, you know, air, oxygen, life. And the world wants you to break the silver cord, to cut it, and they will give you another cord where you can breathe here. It's just that simple. People think, well, if you commit suicide, you've cut the silver cord. Um, It's a lot easier than that to cut the silver cord. It's done every day. Another one bites the dust, another one bites the dust, another one bites the dust, and yet they live on being given all their Nazi jobs, Mind Control 101, here you can be this, you can be that. So glad you could make it. Mama, 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 mama. Make it, make it, make it, make it. What I like, remember the Eurythmics? Yeah, what I lie to you. Anyway, um, yeah, so the silver cord, before that silver cord is loosed, you know, before the end, before the before Al returns to dust, the spirit of man returns, or rather, the spirits return to God, who gave it. God gave us life in these vessels. The spirits are given in the creation. The spirit is given into the flesh so that there would be life. Without spirit, there is no life. The worlders know this. That's why they want to be in charge of giving out spirit. And they have a method of a kind of a counterfeit uh, method of a, of a silver cord connection that kind of works, I guess. But you got to choose. you got a choice. You can choose one or the other. Gosh, I'm really, it's really on my heart, someone in Santa Barbara there that... Just looking in on things. I don't know why. You know, I just see the Lord moves in mysterious ways, brother. That's what happens. Um, you know, I'm sure this is on your mind. You'll just have to take a moment while I address the brother here. This is on your mind, and um, I can just tell you it's the spiritual journey I think, uh, I, you know, I've been through the wars, and you know, I, you know, I paid a price for uh, my being rebellious towards Satan, <laughs> my being rebellious on here, whatever. There was a price paid, but there was not a, see, the thing is, you're thinking about it now. There wasn't a mistake made in the choice. There, there was, you know, great self-destruction and great indulging and great sinning going on, yes. But there was kind of like a line that wasn't crossed. And um, God must have honored that because I should have been you know, dead a million times over because, you know, they were coming after me. They'd... And uh, I was going after myself with drugs and whatnot and... There were all kinds of, you know, there, you know, right? You know the story. So there was all that going on, and it was kind of like a test of, like, if you could survive that, then it would prove, and this is what my mother told me, it proved that God had his hand on me. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here because the odds are so great. I mean, who would do that, right? Who would want to die for, for Jesus, or die for God. Now, at that time, I wasn't dying for Jesus. You know, in fact, I was rebellious. I didn't like the church. I didn't, but the whole thing was bogus at that time. And we're talking about going back to teenage years. And, um, but, you know, the world being Satanist and, you know, having this sort of massive pedophiliac orgy of 
and, and deaths everywhere. Uh, that wasn't really appealing to me either. And that was sort of, you know, so surviving it means when you resist, they, um, they do everything they can to destroy you, you know, especially if you're a witness so that you won't be able to have any credibility when you report that uh, you were traumatized, you were abused, you were in satanic ritual abuse, whatever, all those kind of things, you would be marginalized for mentioning because the society being controlled completely is not allowed to think that there are things like that. I mean, even Geraldo went out looking for that mysterious little group somewhere. When it's like, dude, you're in it. What are you talking about? It's everywhere. It is the way it is. So people get intimidated by that, and then they conform, which is all we're talking about here, because they, you know, they don't want to be hurt. So it's completely understandable, bro. <laughs> Long lost. Uh, it's completely understandable and logical that man, seeing the writing on the wall, would choose the path of uh, survival. But being that it's something that no one seems to talk about, and certainly nobody in any church that I know of, and seems that since humanity is a coward whistling by the graveyard, um, so it seems to me that because of that, we have World War III. Because of that, we have uh, rampant corruption in government. Because of that, all the, all the chickens come home to roost when you have that sort of dishonesty with God, when you make it a policy to be conformed to the world in exchange to be a member of a church, let's say, to be, to be a worlder, to be a player, to be somebody, to be a, uh, accepted and connected, whatever. To be those things in order to be cherished or valued where the homeless man is shunned and the guy that you say is the bum, he's not really, they might put him in the back, way back there somewhere. Or just tell him not to come in. You know? In other words, the system would shun a guy like Jesus. So let's just stay with that point. Let's, it's, gosh, I, I want to get myself out of the equation here. Let's just stick with that one point, Okay. So Jesus would be that homeless guy to be shunned off to the side with the beard, hair, and unkempt clothes. He would not be acceptable because he would not be. And once he got in there, he would start probably, he'd say, look, you keep your mouth shut, they would say. The pastor would say. This, I've heard the very words. You be quiet for a couple of years until you get with what's going on. And then, and then they'll pull the bait and switch on you, you know, every time, uh, so they'll come to your home, they'll, do, they'll get in your face, they'll get in your mind, they'll get in your, you know, they'll start handling and control. That's what they do. They're handlers and controllers. They just have one method. They'll treat you like a child and try to, like, deprogram you from this idea of you as an individual and re-raise you as, like, a hive mind collective slave who has been told you're free and Jesus, go out and hand out tracts or do whatever, and eventually will let you speak Jesus Christ Eventually, Lord Yeshua will let you speak once you've earned your bona fides, once you've climbed up out of the snake pit, once you have participated in the activity. Then you'll be one of us accepted, and then you'll be given the microphone to speak. Okay, let me get this straight. You want Jesus to sell his soul in order to speak the word of God. Is that what you want? Of course, the irony is, I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. This is so, I mean, it's so dead to rights here. It's, a, it's, a, it's basically a sign sealed, you know, it's, a, it's case closed. Bang, 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 court adjourned. It's over. This, 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 that's the truth. Am I right? You still with me, Santa Barbara? Didn't put you to sleep, did I? All right, well, listen. Okay, but then you say, yes, but we got to get along in this world. And oh, are we? Are we getting along with uh, 
How about the government? How about Europe? How about Syria? How about Israel? Are we getting along? Getting along great. Hey, things couldn't be better. Is this what you want to show your kids? What a wonderful world it can be? Just pursue your own pleasures and just try to ignore the edges of the Truman Show where all the lights are and all the, the set design is. And don't go all the way out to where the end, where that wall is out there. Make sure you don't go that far. Because then you'll see it's a set. You'll want to you'll be free, right? You'll need Jesus. But wait, you're an elder in the church. What do you mean I got to meet Jesus now? Well, and now let me give you the... Hey, now, stop. Wait for this next one. Okay, so the spiritual walk is a progressive thing. We can look at it like a walk from... You know, we're born in corruption, okay? We've got that. <laughs> All you have to do is look at the, world, at the world of man. Everything else is pretty cool, but you look at the world of man, it's corrupt. All the institutions of government are corrupt. We are corrupt. You look in the mirror, you're corrupt. I'm corrupt, we're all corrupt. So we would expect to see corruption as an external embodiment. Of course, that's no reason to embrace it. It's just that that's what's there. Okay. So man begins an institutional day. He's mind-controlled from kindergarten to become a productive worker, to become productive in society. Along with that, used to come when I was a child, you would have the church, you would go to Sunday school, and you'd have the church and the education, go first grade, second grade, third grade, church, you'd get, you know, you get uh, baptism, confirmation, communion, and you would grow up in that way, and you might become a member of a fraternity, or become, uh, go into the military and be in a place there. So you have the military institution, you have your church, you have, everything's kind of, everything's provided, okay? And I want to say this parenthetically, all of it, everything is provided and all of it is false. But it's, I put that in parentheses right now. We buy into it like we bought in as kids going to Disneyland. We thought, gee, those rides scared us, and boy, that was really real. That was really something. And uh, yeah, well, you're getting this. You're getting this download right now. So we go through a progression, you know, with the spirits, and then we we drop out. We go Eastern, let's say. Certainly, I, I kind of embraced all of it. I, I went Eastern into everything, Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, Zen, both schools, uh, uh, Tibetan Buddhism, Mahayana Buddhism, Hinayana Buddhism, all the different kinds of things you could do. And in, in, uh, in Zen, it's Soto and Rinzai. And so there's some of you who listen who are kind of had that experience. Okay, all right. Okay, great. Well, that's why I say aloha. <laughs> uh, okay, so look. So we search high and low, and then for me it became a journey of, and I needed to find out what was wrong with the world. So unlike Siddhartha, who left all his riches to go out in the world and sit among the homeless and ascetics who are seeking spiritual truth through denial of food and things like that, you know, asceticism, which is a tradition, and um, it's kind of a yogic Hindu tradition, and he went out, uh, and he did, found that didn't work for him. So he found, the, he found a, the middle way. And so, you know, the middle way was, Buddhism, I, say, I would say, is a way of ethics and contemplation that makes people better, more sensitive, more loving, less hateful, less, less, less uh, egregious person if you follow the Eightfold Path or whatever. It's very, very good ethics. I, I don't know that, that you know, I, I've, around a lot of Christians, you get a lot of bashing of religions and stuff. And, you know, I had an email from a, I think a young person, but maybe my age, I don't know, um, yesterday about um, how he would listen here to the Zeph Report and he would, he would get confirmation after confirmation. He said, doesn't he want to call himself a Christian? It's like, I know exactly where this brother is at, you know. Um, so weird a position we've been put in. But you see, 
it's all a progression. And let me just now digress. Well, I've digressed enough. Let me get back to the point. So what we want to do is let people know that God will bring you through. So church is like part of the progression. You know, there was, you know, they'll say, oh, you must lower your pride, brother. And, you know, in other words, you know, let your armor down and do what we tell you. We've, I have never seen an exception to that. Um, I suppose that there are, but I haven't seen one. But that's part of the progression to be, uh, you know, obedient because you've been so bad in your own life. You've had such rough time. You cried out to Jesus. You got on your knees. You prayed, Lord, I'm a horrible sinner and I feel terrible. And I'm empty inside. I've got nothing I'm, or in my, like my case, I am beyond death, Lord. Take me. I'm not there. I just, if you want to use me, use me. I'm just done. I'm done. I'm, there is nobody here. Just a, a wreck of whatever used to be a person, a completely dissociated individual that has no, just, just a wreck, a loser, a fool. I have nothing. Lord, I just, if I die, can I not know anything? That would be peace to me if I don't go anywhere. You know, that level of spiritual growth. And I cried out so earnestly because I was beyond any move. I was beyond any plan. I couldn't do anything. I've been, I've seen the devil. I've seen the other side. You know, I mean, I've seen their world over there and I'm like, oh God, because I saw that they're coming after me again. Because they like, if, they, if you, they know you see something, then they're like, they're on you. Zip! There's 20 people on you, right? <laughs> and I'm just like, I, I'm sick of this. I've, I can't stand these people. I have no friends. You know what I mean? All these people, they're not my friends. This is just a game to them. They have no soul. They have no connection they're just gang stalkers. They're just, they're just in it for some kind of thrill. They're not even human anymore. They belong to the hybrids. But, but see, there's another story there. So let's, so that next, so okay, you, so you're at the end of your rope and all your friends have, you know, taken their masks off and proven to be ghouls, right? People are strange, Jim Morrison, the doors. When you're a stranger, yep. You become a stranger, but there was part of the breaking process of the Lord. You see, it had to get to the point where I was a stranger and they took their masks off proving I, these are like jackals. I don't know what they are. I don't even know that they're human or even, you know, they have a look like they're human, but maybe with their projections or holograms, I don't know what they are, but this is spooky stuff. Lord, help me. So that's part, part of the spiritual, you know, hitting bottom, you know, Finding out you're all alone, abandoned or betrayed by all, uh, or, even, or worse. And um, you find that you've got nothing in this world. And, no, and so you cry out to God on my, on my knees, on my back, on my face, on the stones, on my back, looking up in the firmament. It's the middle of the night. It might be this time of the, you know, three, three-ish, 3.30. And, um, uh, and the Lord spoke to me. I mean, he was there and I felt this presence looking through my eyes was in me looking through and moving my fingers and, and, and ministering to me at the same time. Tell me all these things that only God would know about me. You know what I mean? I, just all this stuff that was beyond, beyond even this life. I'm aware of and um, went on and on and on and you know um, and then proved himself through these miracles which was like one was like kind of a being literally lifted up uh, you know I don't know how far maybe to forever and back kind of translated um, then of course there was the being given a mission being put on the internet uh, being given a word to speak and that word was hated you know, being on a tour of the churches and you know, winding up in one piece, speaking truth to power, because the church is powerful, and if you speak truth to power, you could wind up, you know, a statistic. So speaking truth to power, you know, and, 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 and writing and, you know, the Zeph Report born, and all those things happen, 
and this divine guidance and protection and closeness to where anybody starts something, any games get played, he just, he just deals with it and deals with them because most of them say, I'm a Christian just like you. Hi, brother. And it's all nicey-nice in the beginning, but it always comes down to this. You know, now I chose my God, my Lord, Yeshua, the one that I publicly proclaim today again. This is my, this is, this is my breath. This is the one who put life in me. This is the one I owe. Not the people that doctored the DNA to compromise us into this limitation situation. They may feel they have some sort of copyright or proprietary interest. We're talking about the watchers here. They may feel they have some proprietary interest that they, after all, grew us. They made us to do this labor, to be Egyptian slaves or whatever. But the bottom line is, in the end, um, it is the Lord God that gives the spirit. Amen. He's the one that gives the breath. He allows them to do what they do. In a way, this whole story was done through his creation, through light and dark, through corrupt and pure through this collision of opposites, God made this temporary situation, this movie set that we're on. So he, above all people, you know, has informed me that it's just like a game show. That's not my word. It's, you know, dust to dust. It's not permanent, in other words. It's transitory. We are passing so quickly before you even blink, it's over. So what was the point? The point is to be vetted for God. In other words, to, you know, to give him your love and, and you know, to, to realize what the situation is. And then the response is to give him everything. You give it to him. You give it up to him. No one else, nothing else. Nothing else matters because nothing else really exists. Anything that's stuck in time and perishing is actually non-existent. It's part of a kind of a, a vapor. Whoosh, gone. It's not real, in other words. And plus, it's malleable. It exists on millions of dimensions, millions of aspects to this dimension, I should say. So the angels are always moving things around to protect God's people, you know. So, you know, they'll move heaven and earth, literally, time and space, but make it look contiguous to you so you won't see there was an intervention. The, and the angels are always doing that. And they're all around us, doing... You know, you're, you're, you know, you're on the freeway, driving your car too fast, and there's a stop up ahead that you're not seeing, and you're all going to die. So they just move time and space, and they fix the freeway before you get there. And then you, right? And they guide you home. And nothing miraculously happened. And next time you vow you're not going to drink and drive. Well, that's a good idea. But I'm just saying, that's the kind of thing. See, despite your lousy behavior... God is there. It's all his thing. It has nothing to do with anybody's will. None of us, you know, you may have free will to choose something, but God made you that you would choose a certain thing. So you see, free will and destiny, people go, that's a gray area. It's not a gray area. God's own hear his voice. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice and heed. And the worlders hear that, uh, let's see, uh, Let's see if I can just... Okay. Um, the sheep hear my voice and they heed. Um, yeah, the sheep hear his voice. In, in the Psalms it said, Today if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in a provocation. So if you hear his voice, heed, you know. Uh, to him the, the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name and leads them out. Out of what? He calls the sheep by name. He knows his sheep. He calls them by name. And what does he do? Jesus, that is. Yeshua, the one. Messiah, God, truth, Word, 
What does the word do? It leads us out of where? The, in, the enslavement that we were born into in the world system. We're born slaves. I don't know that you understand that. These people think that they're in the matrix and they think it's a real world. They think they have choices. They have magazines about self-improvement. They have, um, you know, and, and that, that you really can control or, or financial improvement or some kind of thing. We all, all of us get caught up in it. We all want to improve our quality of life, you know. But the thing is, is that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, of course, it's all an illusion, you know. It's the same for the, for the you know, no one escapes this. It's the, it's the same slavery for all. One might be rich, one might be poor, one might be in the middle, one might be sick, one might be well, one might be old, and one might be young, uh, who's a paraplegic, let's say. And then there might be one, another brother who runs really fast and has no problems. And it's uh, widely distributed all over. Point is, it's, it's not real. These are just temporary conditions, you know, to, again, test what we choose. Do the sheep, do you hear the master's voice? And do you heed? Well, in my case, I had no choice. I kind of like a lot of you, I hit the proverbial wall and I was surrounded by the enemy and people I thought were friends who turned out to be liars and thieves. And it's like, and I confronted them. I'd say, look, why didn't you tell me that, you know, this was a game and you serve Satan? Overtly he goes, well, because that's, we're not allowed to. And that this is all, you even coming over here is organized. You know, there's a headquarters somewhere. They're telling you to come over here, like in the movie, The Game with Michael Douglas. And he goes, yeah, that's right. And if I become too friendly with you or helpful to you, then they're going to jump on me because I got bosses. Really? This is a whole subterranean world that I knew existed, but I'd been in denial about for about 20 years. And now here it is again in my face. So yeah, I fell on my face to the Lord. I was like, I realized I had to make a choice. Now I could have chosen them, the liars and the cheats. you know, through intimidation or whatever. But I knew to choose the Lord. I knew I had no other place to go. I had to be with the absolute. I had to, because I'd always been, you know, it's like, I'd always been a spiritual cr creature. I've always kind of been one that, you know, people say you have your head in the clouds. You're always thinking about things. We're always, when I was in bands, we'd drive and talk all night. You know, instead of sleeping on the way home, we'd talk all night about this kind of stuff. So it always been that the only thing that really stopped me from giving it all to the Lord is just, you know, was this idea that somehow, well, my thought was just like what I wrote in a book, um, that I would wait for a solution, that there will be a solution. I just had to hold on. And a solution came. Does that mean that I've shown the world the face of total peace? No, because I'm very theatrical and I'm very emotional and I'm up and down, I'm all over the place. I have cussed. I'm not going to put on a mask. You know, sometimes I've cussed. I, did, I didn't mean to do the S-bomb, Frankie, if you're tuning in here. I'm sorry I've done that. And I'm sorry I've, you know, I, I apologize to you when that has happened because I, there's no call for it. But I've done that. You know, it's like I'm kind of gruff in, in a way and a little bit hardened from, um, but not the heart. It's not hardened. You know, I, I still trust people that are still in that thing and they still have bosses and they're being told to be my friend and I, you know what I mean? And, and I'm, being, I'm being friendly with them that the Lord may help them. But I don't, it, it, it has gotten me down, this situation, but we may need to keep going. Now, this is another level of spiritual awareness. You're aware, aware that there's this game afoot. The people are in it and they have regions, guilds, neighborhoods, clubs, and out of those come bosses, handlers, controllers, honchos, who send people out to make sure that the whole world is conquered for Satan. In other words, that we make slaves of everybody because then God has to destroy the earth. And so it's kind of like, Satan has everyone fooled to think that he made God do Sodom and Gomorrah. 
Satan made God his bitch, sorry to say that, but, and, and made him nuke Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? So if you get enough in, in other words, if we convert everybody, then my goal as Satan would be achieved, i.e. at that point, just like taking the rule of Genesis, taking the rule of Sodom and Gomorrah, remember Abraham would go, well, look, if there's like 50 left, if there's, it got down to like around 20, 25, I forget now, I have to reread that every once in a while to remember the formula, but it gets down to a very small number. 10, is it? Okay. But then, then God, he doesn't hear back from God. I mean, if it gets down to 10 righteous in a town, based on, say, 100,000, God doesn't answer. He's going he's gonna to take it out, right? So he's, he's going to take it out. So the goal of Satan then, cynically, cynically, very cynically and thinking so clever that he's so clever, is that I'll just, through the churches, corrupt everybody and through the institutions, make sure we get everybody, call them good citizens, have everyone employed and make it all look good on the surface. How could God take them out? They're innocent. And do this double-double game, right? Of conquering everybody silently, quietly, through the, through the women and the bedrooms and the private functions and the various things. But in the end, they know it's all a Luciferic initiation anyway. So, and they all keep button-lipped about it so that no one knows. And it's spooky and supernatural, so we're going to get them. Then God, Yahweh, the one, will destroy America because we've gotten into everybody and everything. See, we've gotten... Our hooks in everybody and everything. We have all our honchos making sure. The one guy I prayed with, he was a, he was a guy going to church in, in the San Fernando Valley, and uh, and he worked at this internet store. I remember, and he was just. We always had these long spiritual talks. I said, "Brother, I'm going to pray with you. You know that the, that you get busted free." He was telling me about the Jezebels in the church, how they run everything, and how it's you know they've got satanic stuff going on and. He said, brother, I'm going to pray with you. He goes, well, I can't. You can't. I can't do that. I can't do I can't afford that. Because they'll hear me. I'm like, really? They're inside your head, huh? They can hear everything you think and say? Yep. Wow. That is some slavery. And this all happened by going to church? Yep. I don't forget that. We wanted to pray, you know, and he couldn't. He was afraid, and he was going to be going back on went for Wednesday night Bible study, and it's evangelical, you know. And uh, but th- this is, you can just multiply this across everywhere. So we'll get in there, says Satan. We'll we'll make sure that those pastors have gone through our schools and gotten our degrees, meaning they're vetted, and then we'll just infect everyone, and then God will have to destroy it all. He's going to have to really kill everybody then. So I, Satan, made Yahweh my bitch and made him do what I want, which is to kill humanity because I didn't want it in the first place. I'm God. Therefore, I'm God, he says. So the Lord, and I'm asking the Lord, you know, in the middle of the night, I'm going, oh, that's really disturbing, the idea that Satan thinks Sodom and Gomorrah was his victory, that he made you do that because at the end of the day, Everyone who serves him, he's going to kill. Don't you understand? You just signed your own death warrant. He's going to kill everyone. He thinks. He, Satan, thinks he can make God kill you. And then, and then God will get the blame for being so mean while Satan is the God. You see how that works? That's double-double. No, it's not, uh, not in an outburger. But it's double-double, Right? It's, it's it double deception each way. It's brilliant. It's genius. It's rocket science. So you got Satan figuring now he's God. And he can make Yahweh do anything simply by corrupting God's people. Corrupt, corrupting people anywhere. And then when there's enough corrupt, that is on that side, playing that game. And that game feeds on souls. So it's like, it's, it's like multi-level marketing. Once you get some in, you have to go out and get more in order to exist because you can't, you can't live without it, right? So you have to keep going. That's just a recipe for disaster. But the game Satan's playing is, 
And after enough of this sickness spreads, right, this, this mind control slavery, as long as in corruption and perversion and all the, you know, the, the nasty things I want to talk about. I don't want to ugly the show. I don't want to sully the show by mentioning all about that. And you just, if you're on the internet, you can see there's some pretty ugly things there, right, about this world. And all of them lead to this issue. Every single ugly thing leads right to this. I'm standing right at the fulcrum between light and dark. It's right here on the show. Right here, right now, in your face. I don't need to explain everything or go through the news. You know it. Okay, so Satan thinks, you know, I'll get everybody. And, and it's really, you know, the, the, uh, there's a double irony here. And one is we're born in slavery. We're born corrupt. So it's kind of like getting you twice dead would be to get you to acknowledge that God is real, but to turn against him in order to live. You, that's the lie you're taught. Okay? And so you do it. And then you live on like that. You see, oh, I got a job and I can pay the bills. I'm paying, you know, things sort of magically come into your life that, that keep you on the dole, right? Keep you on the gravy train, right? Okay. So then, now you've got this issue where you're like double-minded. On the one hand, you want God. And on the other hand, you can't pray about, you can't make a move because you're stuck in this matrix of connections. And so you're stuck. You're like pinned to the wall. You can't move. It all depends on what everyone else thinks, what, what, how the whole thing operates. Someone in Christ doesn't even see that. They're just walking along like a fool. Just playing along, the fool on the hill. E -de 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 -de. What are you talking about? Everything's fine. You know, or, or whatever. And then there's great envy and jealousy. It's like, oh, we're going to get him. He's not going to be allowed to walk around like that. He's going to have to pay like I had to pay. We're all going to have to pay. And with that attitude, you bring about your own total destruction, right? Because we'll get everybody, is the attitude that I've seen everywhere, bar none. And... Um, so the idea in the end of the day is uh, to, to, to force God's hand in, in destroying it or allowing them to go ahead and hybridize the DNA, which we could put it more into scientific terms rather than kind of comic book terms of Satan and, you know, those broad terms people don't understand because they, they see a comic book here. So let's not talk about that. Let's just say that leads the way toward hybridization and to the machines, and to the singularity, and to all of that, which is the end of this. But, argument from the other side, you were made as laborers to do work. We engineered you. You know? We gave you your religions. We wanted you to be productive workers. And not question things. And for a long time, humanity was just in that cycle of life, birth, death, you know, globally. I'm just getting out of the Christian culture and all the other cultures. I mean, globally, there's, it's just been basically a slave racket. Uh, and now, as we move into the age of machines, humans, uh, you humans, are no longer as vital or necessary. There's a need to depopulate the earth because you know, what's good for the environment. Um, the environmentalists are the only destroyers of the earth that I know of. But anyway, not, not the, you know, I guess not the Sierra Club guys walking around, but I mean the, the big guys. People with like planes that, that spray chemtrails, things like that. So the bottom line here, Satan, uh, figuring he's forcing God's hand, uh, by conquering all, okay, and, um, you know, which, that's what rock and roll was for, was to conquer, right, in this way, uh, to work for the man in the three-piece suit, to you can have long hair and you can dress like a hippie and look like you're free on stage and all that, but you serve the boardroom, right? This was all, right? The, the whole idea then spiritually was for these guys to go out as evangels to get everybody in on the bus, Remember the song Magic Bus by the Who? To get you all on the bus. Roll up for the Magical Mystery Tour. To get you all on the bus. Right? It was, it was just a plot. It, it had nothing to do. These guys weren't free. They were like Illuminati puppets. 
to get you on the, well, let's not even say the term Illuminati because that is another, another big broad term and it's comic book. So let's get out of there. Okay. So to get everybody on the bus and then you see God won't be able to intervene, then we'll be able to go ahead with the next thing, the evolution of man into the utopia society. Okay, so politics, religion, the spirit, the spiritual battle, all of this is intertwined with prophecy. We have to go back, though, to the Bible, to the, to the original, you know, Genesis has to be broken down and broken out. You know, the, the, Bible, the only truth you're going to get is that Bible. In terms, I know the Mahabharata and the Bhagavad Gita, which is contained within it, um, I have, you know, I took those classes and I'd, I slaved over that book. And so I've seen the epic battles. I've seen other allegorical stories like that, you know, as holy books. And, um, you know, read the Koran as well. And uh, it just isn't the same prophetic, holographic truth that the Bible is. I don't know why that is. If the Lord's chosen that and that why it's not more widespread like there's Lao Tzu expressed about the Tao and, uh, you know, the Tao of living and the, the Tao Te Ching and the, you know, all these aphorisms, all this wisdom that Lao Tzu had 500 years before Jesus. And um, wonderful, wonderful wisdom. Just like, you know, the sutras of the, of the Buddha and whatnot. Wonderful stuff in there. Confucius, wonderful stuff. Great, D.T. Suzuki, lots of very deep, amazing ideas. And, and then, you know, and applications of ways to live. Ancient wisdom from before this whole Western civilization story, which is now ending in, in some kind of uh, conflagration. You know, it doesn't matter what you've got these days. You know, everyone's at risk of just literally dying because of, S -s some misunderstanding in Syria leads to uh, a nuke flying somewhere. Pretty soon the old president's got the football, and then it's uh, anyone's guess what would happen to us, right? And, and, yeah, they're whipping it up, hoping for something like that, because then they don't have to take the blame, just like Satan doesn't have to take the blame for Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Satan doesn't take the blame. Yahweh did that. Satan doesn't take the blame. He could, he could get everybody on the bus which he did in Sodom and Gomorrah, and then whoopee, he gets everyone on the bus in America like he's done pretty much, and the next thing you know, there's a nuclear war. Same thing, but it's not Satan's fault. The public will blame God. God will be the one who did it. In the end, they're, even as they're dying, they will yell at God. I mean, the smart, the people who still have a brain left, well, but... You know, and then you see the poisoning of the system and, you know, the, 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 the talk about fluoride and dumbing down IQs and uh, chemtrails and, you know, stopping the rain, causing drought or serious storms and keeping man completely unbalanced. I mean, we'll pay his bills over taxation, overwhelming the system, overwhelming debt that we can never get out of. I mean, all these things are judgments. I mean, these are terrible things that have happened the last, like, especially the last four years. But I see this as a continuation from over the last 15, 20 years. I mean, it's not, it's, and then, of course, it's a continuation over the last 1,000 or 2,000 years. Let's, you can't really put a beginning on it, but I can say this. All the presidents you've seen have all been just sock puppets. And they, um, this one's the only one we've seen that's overt, but he's carrying on the same policies as Bush. I mean, that's what people don't understand, who is carrying on the policies of Clinton. But these policies that are Bushonian or Clintonian or whatever, or Reagan-esque or whatever, they're not, they, they don't, those aren't their policies. They're just serving their masters. There's no, I don't know if there ever would be a, you know, I suppose, shoot, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just going to stay out of politics and I'm not going to talk about it because I, I can't solve it. You know, I can't solve it. And a lot of these guys have prayer meetings. Bush had prayer meetings every Friday. You know, and he was always talking about God and scripture and him and Billy Graham. And, and I just, I, I, I look at that, I shake my head. I think about 911. I'm like, I think about the mind control that there's no such thing as false flag terror. And I look at all the evidence and I'm like, I'm looking at Bush and I'm shaking my head and I'm, 
I just, you know, I, I just think for you guys out there, this is all these things, even the, like the Boston thing, all these things must be very difficult for you who are awake to deal with because they count on you not understanding that this is your world that you live in. Isn't, it's just, it's fabricated by Madison Avenue and by, you know, the television and by uh, social little doctors behind the scenes that you don't see. They want you to, th you know, and now they're changed and you see how they're changing the, they're changing it, but they, these people are above the law. They, there is no law that applies to them. They're the real rulers of the United States. And unless that situation gets addressed um, in some way, shape, or form, okay, the Lord wants me to tell you, uh, you are in the United States, and I have to be very accurate here, there are not enough people gone over to put an end to the American experiment. I say that in good terms, not bad terms. Not a Nazi experiment from behind the scenes, but the American experiment. So th that there are enough here to... Okay, well, that's very good news. According to the Sodom and Gomorrah formula. And people go, well, you're anti-gay. It's like, that's... Sodom and Gomorrah, you think it was a gay issue? It had nothing to do with that. Yeah, they called it sodomy. No, no, I know, I know. But it had nothing to do with that. It's, Satanism was the thing that was going on. Um, ritual abuse, rape, raping of children, you know, just terrible things, human sacrifice, eating of hearts, cutting heads off. I mean, all of that wickedness. You know, once the revelry starts going, there's no end to it. And it had nothing to do with the... the People focus on this. So, you know, you're never going to have it. Look, gays, hey, gays. Um, we all have whatever it is. Don't get caught up in that whole political gay thing because it's going gonna, it's gonna to enslave you. You know, you just take it to Jesus, whatever it is, whatever your concern is. I don't think you need to get me, you, you know, the ethos out there is this. We're going to force everyone to be gay so then it'll be okay. You know, you see the illogic in that, and that's, their, that's the political thing. It's like, forget it. Just walk on. We're all capable of any kind of sexual thing. We all have these proclivities and perversions and things we don't like. We have a fallen flesh condition. We get angry at each other. We say bad things. We do bad things. Um, uh, many people in spiritual walk, whether they were gay, straight, or in between, or, any, or anywhere along the spectrum, they became celibate in order to seek God more. And, um, you know, I, I, I think there's just like today, if you said you were celibate, you'd be just looked at as a weirdo, period. You know? Oh, come on, don't you just kind of, you know, at least when you privately, don't you at least? No, really? Are you serious? Then you must be dead from the neck down, buddy. Just saw a movie last night that I hadn't seen in a long time. It was just marvelous. It was meant for me, just speaking to me. It was called Stigmata. Um, Gabriel Byrne and, uh, oh, I forget the actress's name. She was very good. Uh, Patricia Arquette, okay? Marvelous little movie. Anyway, the, the crux of it was they discovered a scripture at Nag Hammadi. You know, the Dead Sea Scrolls, Nag Hammadi, the... Uh, you know, the, the, and the Gospel of Thomas was thought to be very, very authentic. And Jesus' words were, um, you know, the kingdom of God is within you. God is everywhere around you. That was the crux of the story. And that scripture threatened the church. I'm like, have you seen Luke 17? You writers, hey, producers and writers, let's go to it. I mean, can you believe it? They don't even know what's in their own Bible. Because if they did, they would have said, but it's already in the Bible. I mean, it didn't bring the church down. The church doesn't worry about being brought down. Um, uh, let's go to uh, Luke 17, uh, 21. I'm sorry. Okay, and let's go to 21. I'm just, I'm on my computer here. Uh, Okay, where, is, where am I? Gosh, I can't really... Um, 
Oh, I'm in Luke 21. I don't know why this thing, it's going to wherever it wants to go. It's not going to where I want to go at this point. I have not tamed it yet. Um, okay, there we are. Now, 17. Sorry, folks. I just, uh, this is a cool program. It's really fast. And I guess this is the American Standard Version. Let's compare them. Neither shall they say, lo, here or there, for lo, for lo, the kingdom of God is within you. And then he goes on, so you're going to want to see, okay, let me, can I back up here? It's just stuck, oh yeah, okay, there it is. Being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God is coming. People still today, they keep saying, when God's kingdom is coming to earth. And, and I'm, I'm just like, I, 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 I want to read this one more time. I don't think people see this. Oh, the, the, Bollinger, the Bollinger people, what they wrote about this? They completely butchered the scripture. That's why I, I took that book and I kicked, I made it, you know, I kicked it, burnt it, you know, get rid of it. It's, it's, if we got one lie on this thing, can you imagine how much other untruth there is in there? Uh, and being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God cometh, he answered and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say lo here or there, for lo, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said to the disciples, the days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you shall not see it. Okay, now let me go back to the King James, because this is confusing language, to say the least. Okay. So the Pharisees demanded the truth from Jesus. He goes, the kingdom of God comes not with observation. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. He said to the disciples, the days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man. That's very similar. Um... And you shall not see it. And they shall say to you, see here. Hey, see there. Go not after them. Do not follow them. Hey, look, the kingdom is coming next Wednesday. Do not follow them. It's an external thing. Don't follow them. For as lightning that lighteth out the one part of the heaven, shineth into the other part of the heaven, so also, so, so, shall also the Son of Man be in his day. That's not meant to be a reference to Barack Obama. Sorry. Um, for as lightning that lightens one part of the uh, under heaven shineth into other part, the other part under heaven, so shall the Son of Man be in his day. For first there shall, he shall suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. You could just say the world. And as it was in the days of Noah... So shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They eat, they did eat, they drank, and they married wives and were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Well, that's so hateful of you, Jesus, to talk like that. I wonder if, if anyone can hear this, this word. Because when you look at this word, it kind of, yes, that's the one scripture that sort of invalidates a lot of what the church system of uh, the German school of mind control is doing. I'm sorry. You don't have to do anything. Let's get back to the to, to, to the, the the other. You know, we've categorized this as word and subword. So the other part of the word is this. It's a progression, though. So the church in the world, being a householder, being Nicodemus or whatever, being um, wealthy, being in the world, having your connections and clubs and things. I know a lot of you that, that play golf and have business connections, and that's a stage, okay? You're at that stage. As you get older and those days go by, then you will go into more of a spiritual stage where you'll feel that you'll, you'll either become feeble and just think about yourself and what you lost, or you'll start seeking out to the Lord now that you're no longer running and gunning in the world, so that's another stage. And then hopefully, you know, as you make peace with God and peace with yourselves, you know, and, um, and, and don't get so frightened off by, by me. I don't bite. It's not about me anyway, ever, never was, never will be, and there is no me. I don't really exist as a, a, a real person, I don't think. It's just like trying to 
not be an embarrassment. That's about it. You know, to the Lord, to to the my brethren. The, you know, they're not here. They're they're all around us, though. I'm trying not to. You know. Well, you never wanted me to be eloquent. Now I'm feeling guilty, like I messed this whole thing up today. But okay, the point is, is that there's a progression spiritually, and that a lot of people that feel guilty about running and gunning the world, you should. The reason you need to feel guilty, or at least be looking to God for some sort of protection and and some kind of peace. Because you see, all the things you've done in the world are but what? Back to 12, Ecclesiastes 12. They're but vanity, right? Before the silver cord is loosed, you return, your spirit goes back to God, it's over. Before the dust goes to dust, your spirit returns to the Lord. Man goes to his everlasting kingdom. You make peace with God. And if you didn't, then you would be as if you never were, hence you would be never having been, which is a mind boggler to think of. So we have this progression and you know that goes through institutional mind control and school, which is institutional mind control, and church, which is you know, maybe it, the churches will wake up now that um, now that it's becoming politically incorrect. Well, it always has been politically incorrect, but you know, um, you're always going to have, like even in China, where you know Marxism shuns religion. That they see the value of having the overt church. Bush went there at the Olympics. They have overt churches. They're not the underground churches. So when you go to China, you'll see churches, just like you'll see churches here after Christianity is outlawed. No, that's going to be a weird one. And maybe there'll be a pushback and Christianity will be, prayer will be let back into schools and there'll be some good things. You know, we each have our different station. We each have our different, my awareness is such that I, and I'm so sensitive, I can't really deal with uh, the whole church thing because it's, um, you know, I, I want to remain detached. You know, I used to get really angry at the way I was treated and this, I, but there can't be any animus in me about it. I just, it was just educational in the end. I came here and I looked, I saw, I reported back to the Lord. He told me, in Macar- when I was at MacArthur's church, he told me, um, he was looking through my eyes, that was right after he picked me up, he was looking through my eyes, he was right, he was all, he was on me, all over me. And even like people in the choir were looking at me, and this was kind of a distance, and they were glaring at me, like, get out of here. I'm like, can you really see? And I looked, I double checked, I'm like, are you looking at me? He goes, yeah, he's looking at me and Trish. You looking at us? Is this really for real? Are you really doing that? Zzz, with the eyes? Are you really doing that? Wow. And I saw two angels holding John MacArthur up while he's trying to preach. And I'm like, yeah, you, we, we're holding him up. So I guess he belongs to God, you know? And I've tried to uh, look at it so many different ways, you know? And part of it was just sort of showing that, you know, there's a two-tiered reality. Like there's, there's people that believe that they have God, but they're wearing a mask. And then there's people that really are that are shown to be the bad guys. And, you know, there's this kind of mess. And, and uh, talked about the point of no return, the second death, and, and uh, two different species, the DNA differences, the, you know, the institutional ch- churches and all the establishments and inst- institutions of earth belong to Satan. And, and so if you're a member of that, you're, you know, it's just common sense, right? Conforming mechanism for society is what it's always been. So you figure those people are, you know, going to hell. And it's like, not necessarily. No, nope. there are two big angels holding up by each arm, MacArthur. So they apparently have to hold him, you know, they've... This is just a, you know, uh, so I guess, you know, there'll be different stages. He'll go through another stage. Now he's older, so he'll go through another stage. And I understand Chuck Smith of Calvary Chapel, which we've talked about. He's now battling, you know, a, a cancer issue that he's not expected to live much longer. And, you know, he, I know he thought that he was doing good and that his church has done wonderful things for people. And here I am just being an awful guy. Just talking about what I saw there rather than shutting up. 
you know, and I fully expect that the Lord, I mean, I don't know, I'm not getting a word on this, but I expect that Chuck will go with the Lord. He'll make his peace with God in these last days where you don't see him, and off he'll go. And, and now my, you know, and that will be that. Would I like to see them reform their ways at his institution? Well, it began like that. It began with them wearing like Blues Brothers outfits and, you know, saving the conform, reconforming the hippies into, you know, this. Uh, yeah, so it's it's always been like that. So I guess in a way, the Lord's showing me that there are so many people who are on this progression that belong to God that may be in corruption and, you know, sinning and, and in, you know, sort of halfway, you know, conformed and bowing to the devil at least, but they're moving their way out. In other words, they're progressing along a timeline that, that eventually winds up in them forsaking the world rejecting the, the, all that and embracing the living God and finding peace. And lo, a lot of these people, you know, yeah, they're, I mean, it must feel pretty bad. Let's say you were a pastor of a church and you misled your flock, you know, and you were playing this game, right? The whole time. And then you had to then make peace with God. And God showed you your past. And he showed you all the things where, where, where people were really hurt, you know? And, um, but then you make your peace, you know, and he can show me all kinds of things where what I've done is hurt people. And, you know, we've all hurt people. So it's a progression, but you can't say to the one person, Hey, you, Zeph, you know, you, you put down this whole church system as mind control. How dare you say that? And so this is my answer to those of you who just can't see beyond your silly little argument. For all you people that are th- thinking it's either or, look at it as a progression. Some people are just kind of out of the system. You know, they're just, their eyes are open. I, you can't go back. For me to try to go back into a church situation, would just, it would not be possible because it wouldn't be, it, it, just, it just wouldn't work. Once you see a certain level of stuff, not that it's more advanced, it's just that through circumstances, people become aware, usually through harsh circumstances. Awareness is kind of a survival guide. It's not for me. God is within me and all around me. In fact, I look in the mirror, I don't see anybody there. It's just, I belong to him, and I'm saying right now what he wants me to say, and I can feel it. He's not displeased, so it's, it's going to work out. The good news for you is the gospel is the gospel. Anyone that believes in Jesus Christ, whatever level spiritually you're on, will be saved, meaning will be brought into eternity and uh, consciously so. The thing I like, could I just say this, please? Will you? Look, why are there so many? All you church people are tuning in because you know there's something wrong. You're trying to find a solution. There is no solution, friend. You just go where God leads you. He led us into the churches, many of them, and then out. Maybe he wants you to be there and be a, a shining light of the truth, even though the whole thing is running off the cliff. I mean, maybe that's what you ought to do. You know, for other people, no. For some people, you see, you cannot apply a broad brush to how everyone should behave. We are not. This is part of your mind control programming. This is part of the way the social engineers and the shrinks and the, whoever else is behind the scenes, they've programmed you to think broad brush. You can't quite think out of the box, can you? It's all just either this or that, and you have all these rules, and you can't even see straight. The spiritual journey will open your eyes to it all. You'll realize, like I did, and you'll be mad. It was all a joke. It was all a game show. It was all a ruse, the whole thing. You're going to be mad at God. Why'd you put me through all this, Lord? Then when you're standing outside of it, looking at it, you'll be going, I'm lonely, Lord. I'm like not with you and I'm not here. and I'm kind of in limbo. Thanks a lot. And the answer is not to remain in the slavery of the world. 
nor is it to, to yell at God for your circumstances of him when he delivers you out of something. If he delivers you out of Babylon, which is just call that mystery Babylon being mind control, when he delivers you out of that, at that point, gratitude is the only response. Thank you, Lord. And if you keep your eyes on him from that day forward, I mean, truly broken out. I mean, you can see the folly behind all things, all institutions, and all, all of man's endeavors. It all becomes, as Bob Dylan said in All on the Watchtower, life is but a joke. You know what? That's one of the truest lines Bob Dylan ever wrote. It really is. It's not a game to those who the Lord brings out. And it's not a game to those who, who have peace with Jesus within them as the Holy Spirit. You know, the, the, the Holy Spirit, you know, the, 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 the baptism by the Holy Spirit, which I went through myself, and the, the Spirit never left me. The gifts of God were given to all of us without repentance. Those experiences that I had were given and not taken away. No matter how selfish I might have been or how I didn't get it or how I just fell into my flesh on occasion, you know, the, the, the corrupt nature of the way that I was made, or, or I'm sorry, remade, and, um, you know, but, but the supernatural overcomes that. In other words, by having the spirit of God within me, what happens? The me within me kind of disappears. Like if you said, I, I, you know, I'm supposed to write a bio right now so to, to go with the music and stuff and with where we're presenting for films and television and stuff. We're trying to get, you know, some, some tracks and out there and it's, you know, it's a struggle. But anyway, I need some sort of bio. And I, and I started thinking about that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. Okay, so if, if my assistant is listening, <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to get you that bio. But here's the thing. I don't, you know, I'm like, who? I look back on my life and I look at it and I think, God, you went through that whole thing and you, you weren't even a person. It's like I was imprinted, and no, I'm not the only one. You have to understand that this is, this, is, this is really weird. It's like I was a reflection of everything going on around me in different facets, but never me, whatever me is. And then when I look at what me means, ultimately it's, there is no me. All there is is I am. There's this illusion of me. You might call that the ego me. But the ego me is, is a lie. It's a joke. There was no me. I, I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's the level, you know, that's the level I've gotten to where there is no me. And then let's see, you look in the mirror, you don't see anybody. You sit down to write a bio and you think I could write a bio of, let's say, Joan of Arc or Constantine or, you know, um, uh, anybody. You know, John, Luke, Mark. King David. I don't see any difference. You. It's not we're all the same. It's, there is no, you know, the scary thing about it, it, when you finally get to the end of the silver cord, you know, there is no mystery. All there is is I am. This is a temporary, you know, and, and it's like, and there is no evil. There is, it's just, it's, it's, it's bizarre when you can see that. Then you realize that invalidates the individual, yet we're being lifted up as sovereigns because he is sovereign. But it's not us as sovereign, but him in us is sovereign. So it's one, John 17. It, it's the most bizarre thing, but then you realize you sit down and do a bio and you just, and I draw a blank. I, I have no idea. Did I really do the things I thought I did? Did I speak with the people I thought I spoke to? Were those really my parents and my friends or my schools? Were these experiences really real to me? I mean, they could have, didn't I die a few times and then I wound up in another reality like this one? I mean, it, it, anything could, is possible, you know? Um, it's, it's just the most uncanny thing when you get to the end of the string, the end of the line here, and you realize what it is mystery is solved and then what happens is you disappear and and then I can make a case for my never having been here 
And then I talk to my beloved brethren who are all around me invisible and they're around you too. And um, I'm like, well, how about you take on this job for, and I'll be where you are. And of course they left. They, there's things they don't like. Like one thing they don't like is when we're mistreated, a lot of times, because, you know, we don't really have street smarts or, you know, we're not too savvy in all the lies and games and things. And so when someone's like being sarcastic or, um, I mean, not like me being sarcastic in a, in a broad, you know, to the world or whatever. I mean, being sarcastic, like, but being kind of real to you and around other people, but it's an inside joke with three other people. There's, it's all sarcasm coming at you, but you, you're taking it for face value, and, but they all know the secret. And then that, that um, oh my God. You don't know how the angels think about that. You don't know how the kingdom is about that. The people that do that, well, when they do, in this case, they all get tagged, okay, and tracked. You know, they're tracked anyway, but they get tagged. Like, like um, God considers that throwing a curse. We've all done it. When we're kids, we all have all done it, right? We knew the inside secret, and then the other kid was so stupid he didn't. We made fun of him on the playground. It's just an extension of that. But when it comes down to the spiritual battle and things, and it's all about this subject, the, the angels weep. They, 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 you know, and, but anyway, the, God uses that situation to tag the perpetrators, uh, and they're going to have to deal with it karmically. And the, the, the innocent one, I guess they never even find out. They just, isn't that cute, you know? Because, see, that innocent one was so savvy and smart about the things of the spirit, but not of the world. And so, you know, the people who are really smart on the streets, I mean, they make fun of that. But they need what that man has to, or woman has to say. And yet instead, they're playing these kind of games. So they're never going to hear it. Then on the day where they're desperate and alone, and they're maybe on their last breath with an illness or some horrible thing that's happened, they're going to need the Lord more than anything. And they're going to need the word that that person had that they mocked, and it won't be there. Life is filled with that kind of hardcore reality. So what we want to do as beings here temporarily is we got to recognize, number one, that all there is is I am. And God's will for you is what you're doing is God's will. You're not acting against God's will because he wouldn't be God. So if you're acting and thinking it's against God's will, it's God's will. Okay, so you can see there's a progression going from school, right, training, Socialization, which is the point of school, church, you know, religion, socialization, which is the purpose, and then in your adult life, uh, social groups, clubs, affiliation associations, political parties, and whatnot, and then the, and then the spiritual quest, whether you're on it by force or whether you're on it because you're just curious or whatever, will lead you to denouncing. Rather, seeing through education. Not all of it and everybody. There are teachers that are good that inspire you. And we're not talking about... We're talking about it as a general kind of thing. The institution of school, churches, mosques, synagogues, temples, military affiliations, guild affiliations, fraternities, sororities, uh, special elite clubs, um, political parties, all of those things. And then the spiritual calling occurs. You will then systematically, or God will take you systematically through that entire journey of yours and call it all vanity and show you why it was all folly and a joke. And that you can't really trust those people that were your friends, your fraternity brothers, your country club brothers, your brothers in this and brothers in that. Um, you can't trust anybody. You're going to find out that you're naked and alone. We're naked and alone. We thought we were covered and had houses and things. We are, we, but we're naked and alone. You know, at the end of the day, 
it, it, all there really is is you and your Lord. There really aren't friends and events that happen. It was like, it's just a mystery in a way. I'm trying to explain it the best I can. But you break.